Here I'm placing two ice cubes of similar volumes and masses on two blocks. And let's see what happens to them over time. Please note this is real time, this is not sped up playback. It seems the ice cube on the right has melted at a quicker rate than the one on the left. Let's take the one on the left and put it on the block on the right and see what happens. So the ice cube on the right block has melted at a very quick rate and that leads us to a question of why did one side melt faster than the other? Well, let's take a look at the block. If we were to feel for temperature, the one on the left feels pretty much at room temperature. The one on the right is extremely cold to the touch. Why is that? Well, the one on the left is made out of foam. It's an insulator. And heat energy from the countertop in the room can't pass through the block and get to the ice cube to melt the ice cube. Whereas the material on the right-hand side is metal. And metal is a good conductor of heat energy. So heat energy from the countertop flows through the metal block and into the ice cube, melting the ice cube. The molecules of water absorb the heat energy and move faster and faster, therefore going to liquid phase. And this is counterintuitive to a lot of students. They think the one on the right block should feel much hotter than the one on the left. That's why the ice cube melted. And this is a very good first step to introduce heat energy to students. Another example could be just have them go outside on a cold winter day and have them feel a a cold brick wall or a cold wall outside and ask them the question, well, why does it feel cold? What's going on? What's heat energy doing? Is heat energy from the wall being absorbed by uh, your hand or is the heat energy from the hand being absorbed by the wall making your hand colder? This is an excellent introduction to the concept of heat energy.